here with us this morning. Now I'm very curious, do we have any people that are excited and ready for fall? Who's ready for pumpkin spice lattes, fall? Okay, who's not wishing summer away yet? I'm, yeah, I'm gonna take the last few weeks of summer and enjoy them. But well, we are so glad that you're here with us this morning. 
Our mission here at Gateway is to help you take a step in the right direction, and we hope we can help you do that this morning. If you are newer here, we are so glad that you're here with us this morning. We would love the chance to get to know you a little bit better. So you can meet us out in our atrium there at our guest services, and we have a small gift we'd like to give you there. As well, this morning, we have an excellent children's program. Kids, it's fun, it's healthy. You will have a blast. I'm sure you'll have more fun than in the church service here this morning. So parents, you can bring your kids out into the atrium there, and they will direct you where to go. We also have a program for our students, grades six to eight. You guys can just wait. There will be a slide that pops up there to tell you when to go. Right now, we're continuing our series called Stronger. It's based on the book, um, Strengthen Yourself in the Lord, and we hope that you enjoy this, um, this uh, message this morning. And to go along with our series, we have a weekly devotional. We've been posting Monday mornings. You can find that on our website and our app. Right now, we're going to give you a few minutes, mingle around, say hi to those around you, maybe find out what people have been doing this summer, and we will be back shortly.
Well, we hope that you have already had a fantastic and warm welcome this morning and that you've been able to chat with some friends. We hope that uh, your summer's been going great and that you're looking forward to the completion of that going into September. How many of you are really glad that the kids are going back to school? <laughs> oh, man. How many, of you, how many of you who are going to school are glad that you're going back to school? No, oh, less response on that one. That's okay. Uh, we're glad that you're here today. We hope that you're looking forward to all the great things that God has in store for us. One of the things we want to let you know about is uh, we're so thankful for the many years that the Hibma family have opened their property to us uh, for our Labor Day barbecue each year. But a large construction project for them means that we're doing something different. And so this Labor Day weekend, on Sunday, September the 2nd at 1 p.m., which is right after our second service, we are going to have an exciting event called a Family Block Party. That's going to be a fun afternoon and for our entire church neighborhood. It's for you, your family, your friends, whoever. We are going to have um, inflatables and games for the kids. And we are going to have five food trucks. Get this. We're going to have Gouda grilled cheese, Bafana Boys Portuguese fusion. That sounds good. Mr. and Mrs. Bayo's Chinese food, the Donut Diva, and Maggie Marie's ice cream. So come on. You're going to eat good that day. So we encourage you all just to stay around. Join our family block party. Let your kids take part, uh, if you've got them, in, the, in the, uh, the, the activities for them. Bring lots of cash. It's only cash that's accepted at the uh, food trucks. So go to the bank, take out three or $400, and uh, come ready to pay for you know, five other people's lunch as well as your own, okay? And uh, bring your lawn chair, bring your neighbors, bring friends and family. Admission is free, except for the cash that you're going to pay for the food, all right? So we're going to have a great time together. I'm going to ask the ushers if they would come forward at this time. We're going to receive uh, together giving, uh, where we take a portion of what God has given to us and blessed us, and then we give it back to him. How many of you are really, really glad that God is generous and blessed us so much? Like, seriously. His provision, his blessing, his favor is amazing. And you know, we have an opportunity at times like this uh, to be partners with God in blessing other people. And that's really what this is about. So as you give today, there's many different ways you can give, either in the offering uh, as it comes by, or at the reception area, you can give via debit or on our app or online, lots of different ways. Whatever way it is, doesn't matter. What does matter is that from your heart, you can be part of being generous to bless other people. And with Gateway Church together, we can bless many and we can see God do great things through us as a church. Maybe you're here today and you've been going through some difficult times. Maybe uh, this has been a rough summer for you or maybe just this past week has been difficult. Um, we just want you to know that uh, we care about that. And uh, we have a prayer room right across the atrium. And there are people there who would love to pray with you today. And uh, so if you would like someone to pray with you before you leave, please stop by that, that room. And we would just love to surround you with some encouragement and some prayer before you leave. Let's just pray together before we give. Lord, thank you so much for how much you love us. Thank you for the fact that um, you desire to know us and to bless us. And Lord, I pray for those today who may be going through a difficult time, that you would encourage them and that you would strengthen them and that you would remind them that we're not really meant to do this alone, that we need each other and we need you. Lord, I pray that uh, as we give today, that you'll take everything that we give and, and just use it in whatever way that is best in order to bless the lives of people and increase the ministry of Gateway Church as you've called us to do together. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thanks for giving. And we're going to continue to sing some songs of worship.
singing that song I'm really encouraged because I mean that's one of our own Bev wrote that song it's one of our own and it's coming out of the heart of people who desire truly desire to run after God with all their hearts I hope that's you today and as we sing a song like that it's loaded it's so full and rich with a, not only a statement of how amazing God is but what he's calling us to and as we were singing that, it really hit me that this song is simply a response to how great God is. A song like this is simply a response that says, God, you give me everything. You are life, Lord. You're, you're light. You're love. You, you do so much, Lord, to change my life and to change my heart. And Lord, I, I can only respond by rising up to declare you great and to stand and give you praise. So friends, let's do that today. Let's declare His greatness. Let's declare His goodness. God is so great and God is so good that He is worthy of all of our praise. That's the kind of God that He is today. So come on, lift up your voice and let's declare it together. You give life. You are love. You bring light to the dark. You give hope, you restore every heart that is broken. And great are you, Lord. It's your blood in our lives, so we pour out our praise. We pour. Declare it today. You 
you're great we can seek after you but Lord you are so good and because you're good we will find you when we seek after you thank you Lord that you are the rewarder of those who diligently seek you thank you Lord that you invite us to do so Lord today for every person who's here I pray that you would be so real and near to every heart Lord, we thank you for your greatness and for your goodness. And we thank you, Lord, that you call us to rise up, to stand, to declare your greatness, to focus on you, and Lord, to have hearts that listen to you. We bless you today. 
We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for singing with us today. You may be seated. Hey, Mr. Fisher. Mr. Fisher, can I talk to you for a second? Back off, coach, if you want to stay in this game. I've got holding on 78 white. What are you? Are you trying to cheat my boys out the game? 15 more yards. Listen, let them play, ref. Let them play. Reasonable. Let them play. Let the boys play. Cheetah. Coach, come on. Cheetah. Coach. Go, 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 go! Oh, come on! What was that? Oh, what are you playing? That wasn't a hold? Oh, come on! That was such a bad call! Hey, this! I know all about it, Titus. What are you talking about, Bill? You call this game fair, or I'll go to the papers. I don't care if I go down with you. But before God, I swear I'll see every last one of you thrown in jail. You dig your own grave. Defense on me! Okay, Petey, don't you drift to the strong side. Coach, they're calling a holding penalty on me every time. Did I ask for your excuses? You want to act like a star? You better give me a star effort, do you hear me? Forget about him! Alan! You're in! Come on! All right. Now, I don't want them to gain another yard. You blitz all night! And if they cross the line of scrimmage, I'm gonna take every last one of you out. You make sure that they remember forever the night they played the Titans. What? Leave no doubt! Oh, Come on, bro! Swing it up! Swing it up! Set! Hut! You want to make yourself comfortable down there. Real comfortable. for you, coach. All right, baby. All right. <laughs> you brought us here, coach. Yeah. Run it up, Herman. Leave no doubt. All right. My vote is we don't have a sermon and we watch the rest of the movie. What do you think? Hey, what are you so excited for? Oh, never mind. I don't blame you. That's a good movie. Remember the Titans, it's called. Go rent it, all right? Um, what? Watch on Netflix? Whatever. We don't pay for stuff anymore, Pastor Tim. We get it for free. Make sure they remember forever the night they played the Titans. Leave no doubt. I played football in high school. If there's one thing that's true in football that I learned, which is true of any team sport. It's that you need to listen to your coach. And when you all listen to your coach, great things will happen. It's hard to do the things that we should do, isn't it? It's easier to do whatever we feel like doing. As we saw in the movie clip, sometimes it's easier to leave, to quit, to give up. It's harder to stay, to keep going, to give it all, to leave no doubt. So how can we get stronger in every area of our lives, including our faith? Welcome once again to our summer series called Stronger, in which we are looking at a book by Bill Johnson called Strengthen Yourself in the Lord. 
We are here as a church to help you discover ways to strengthen yourself in the Lord and to grow in your faith and in your relationship with God. That's really what, what we want. So we're in the last two weeks of our summer series, and we have looked at magnifying God, thanking Him, trusting Him, praising Him, praying in His Spirit, meditating on His promises, testifying what He has done. And these things work together to change us, to transform us, to strengthen us. When I was a young teenager, my dad was pastoring a church in Welland, in the Niagara region. And of course, I was so familiar with going to church services and, you know, involved, being involved in the worship team and the music and also in listening to many sermons like you are doing right now. And you kind of get used to your own dad speaking all the time. Gabby, you can relate, right? You know what I mean? It's like, yep, yeah, it's my dad, you know? He's speaking again. I'm very accustomed to this now. My own kids can relate to that too. But, you know, as I was a young teen, you know, being a normal young teen, I think it was normal, um, I, you know, was in the service and, and not really paying attention much. And um, in those days, we didn't have a program for junior highs during the sermon, so they didn't get bored. You know what I mean? And so here, I'm, here I am in this service, and, and typically, like normal, I was not paying attention. I was talking with a friend of mine, and we're just, you know, back and forth and, you know, laughing and joking about stuff, and I'm talking to him, and he's talking to me, and I'm listening to him, he's listening to me, and we're not paying attention at all. And right in the middle of the sermon, my dad stopped preaching, and he turned and looked at me and said, Timothy, are you listening? Think about that for a minute. I wanted to crawl under the floor, never mind the, the chair, okay? And I said, yes, I am. <laughs> it's bad enough that I wasn't listening when my dad was preaching. I lied to him in front of the whole church. Think about that, you know? And the reality is that I, that was only really a half-truth. It wasn't a complete lie. I was wondering what it would be like if we tried that on a, on a, on a Sunday service, you know? That'd be fun, eh? Heather, are you listening? <laughs> she's honest. No, she's not. <laughs> she's paying more attention to the guy beside her, I think, maybe. <laughs> I just had to throw that in there. All right. But the reality is that I, what I said was a half-truth, okay? Because I, was, I wasn't listening to my dad, but I was listening. I was listening to my friend. <laughs> I was listening to the wrong voice instead of the right voice. I was listening to someone I shouldn't have been instead of someone I should have been. Have you ever thought that you were listening and paying attention, but you really weren't? If you're not sure, take a look at this device that you probably have in your pocket. Think about it. You ever been in a conversation with somebody, but either you or they are on this? And it's like, uh-huh, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. Especially if it's your wife and you're in the middle of a conversation and you go, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And she realizes you're not paying attention, so she then says, I'm going to go out and spend $5,000 in our bank from our bank account. And I go, what? Pardon? What was that? Now, thankfully, she's never said that that I know of. But the reality is that things can distract us from listening, can't they? Even little things that we should master and we should have control over, but they can get in the way. You know, sometimes we think we're listening and paying attention, but we're really not. Or have you ever listened to something or someone other than what you really needed to? Like maybe yourself or someone else or a negative influence or even the enemy of your soul. What's, what's sad that we often see as pastors is that there are so many people that they truly do have an intention of being a follower of Jesus and of being a Christian and, and, and committed to God, but they listen to and believe lies that are told to them by other people or even from the enemy, from the devil himself. That's sad. In the book, Strengthen Yourself in the Lord, Bill Johnson makes a statement that sets the pace for what we're looking at today. He says, when we value what God values, 
His blessings will hunt us down. When we value what God values, His blessings will hunt us down. So the question is, how do we value what God values? And as I asked that question, and as I, I, I thought about it and prayed about it, I wondered if it starts with listening. What we listen to, who we listen to, the voices that we pay attention to. Now, remember the theme of our series, Becoming Stronger. Along with the tools of magnifying, thanking, trusting, praising, praying, meditating, and testifying, we today add the indispensable tool of listening. Bill Johnson writes a statement about the significance of listening that we're going to break down a bit. So we're going to look at his statement and we're going to, we're going to break it down and, and take it in bite-sized chunks. So I want you to have a look at this with me, all right? We're going to put it up on screen for you. <clears throat> Think about this. When we listen, we allow what we're hearing to gain our attention and focus, which in turn influences our beliefs and values. These beliefs and values set a standard for our ears that ultimately determines the voices that we pick up in our environment. And this standard is also what draws us to certain people more than others. So think about that again. When we listen, it gains our attention and focus, which influences our beliefs and values, which sets a standard for our ears that determines the voices we pick up on and draws us to certain people more than others. So that leads us to ask some questions. Questions like, what, who are you drawn to? <clears throat> what voices do you pick up on? What standard do you live by? What beliefs and values do you have? What has your attention and focus? Because all of these come back to who are you listening to? Whether we like it or not, we are incredibly influenced by other people, especially people like our friends. I've heard it said, show me your friends and I'll show you your future. The website WebMD had an article called Four Ways Your Friends Shape Your Future. And these are really interesting, thought-provoking statements that are worth um, thinking about. Number one, friends affect the ways that you think and feel about yourself. Number two, friends influence each other's personal preferences and lifestyles. Number three, friendships in the present influence the nature of your friendships in the future. And number four, strong friendships are associated with a healthier and longer life. Isn't that amazing? That's like a medical statistic. Someone once said, what you see, what you hear becomes who you are. What you see, what you hear becomes who you are. So who we listen to, who we pay attention to, who we associate with, who we develop close friendships with will determine how we think, what we prefer, what we do, how we live, and who we become. You can't get away from it. You can't just decide all those things yourself and not be affected or influenced by others. When we purposefully associate with people who share godly values with us and we control wisely our interactions with people who don't, the result is we will strengthen ourselves. And that is so key. That is such a powerful key because sometimes that's missing in our lives. We don't use godly wisdom to decide who our deep and close associations with people are going to be and which voices we're going to pay the most attention to. And unfortunately, the default can just happen. Bill Johnson makes this key statement in the book, and it really sets up the story that we're going to look at today and how, uh, what we can take from it. He says this, strengthening ourselves begins with our choice to listen to God's voice more than any other. <clears throat> Let me say that again. Strengthening ourselves begins with our choice 
to listen to God's voice more than any other. Jesus told a parable. A parable is a story that is used to illustrate a truth or a principle. And, and the one that we're going to look at today is found in Matthew chapter 13. Matthew chapter 13. I'm, I'm going to read it for you. It goes like this. A farmer went out to sow his seed. As he was scattering the seed, some fell along the path, and the birds came and ate it up. Some fell on rocky places where it did not have much soil. It sprang up quickly because the soil was shallow. But when the sun came up, the plants were scorched and they withered because they had no root. Other seed fell among thorns, which grew up and choked the plants. Still other seed fell on good soil where it produced a crop a hundred, sixty, or thirty times what was sown. Now listen how Jesus ends this parable. Whoever has ears, let them hear or let them listen. And then when Jesus got together with his disciples later, he explained the parable to them particularly the various kinds of soil. And here is what Jesus said about the kinds of soil. He said, first of all, we have the hard soil. And that is when anyone hears the message about the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what was sown in their heart. And then we have the shallow soil. Someone hears the word and at once receives it with joy, but since they have no root, they last only a short time. When trouble or persecution comes, they quickly fall away. And then we have the crowded soil. Someone hears the word, but the worries of this life and the deceitfulness of wealth choke the word, making it unfruitful. And then we have the good soil. Someone hears the word, understands it, and produces a crop yielding a hundred sixty or thirty times what was sown. And when I read that parable, something really hit me. It's a simple question, it's a simple truth, it's a simple idea. But sometimes we read these stories that Jesus tells, we read these parables, and we forget that he's talking about us. So what I, what I wondered is this, does it occur to us that we are one of those types of soil? Does it occur to you that you are most certainly one of those types of soil? And the question is, which one? Does it occur to us that others around you are also one of those types of soil? And which type are they? So the question is, who are you listening to? Who are we listening to? What type of soil are they? What type of soil are we? What type of soil do we want to become? And what type of soil do we need around us in order to become that? How are these types of soil affecting us, our spiritual lives and our strength in the Lord? Well, that, it, those are big questions. Those are important questions. And ultimately, what they come down to is this question. How can we be good soil? How can we be productive and fruitful as we strengthen ourselves in the Lord? Now, that's a good question. And I believe that there are three things that we can look at today. They're very simple. They're very straightforward. But they are powerful enough to change your life if you actually believe them and then put them in the practice. Number one, listen to the right people. Pretty simple, eh? In Mark chapter 4, Jesus said, pay close attention to what you hear. The closer you listen, the more understanding you will be given, and you will receive even more. So if you think about it, Jesus ended the parable saying, let the one who has ears, let them hear. And he also said that those who are good soil, they understand the word. And then they produce a crop. They produce fruit because they have understood it. In other words, when we listen and we understand, that is how we will receive even more. Understanding comes when we listen. And receiving even more from God comes when we understand. So how important is listening? 
whoo, it's way up there. You see, when we are porous soil, when we are receptive soil, ready to receive whatever God has for us, when we listen closely and pay attention to the right people, we are then given more understanding, we receive more, and we become more of the soil that God wants us to be. Good soil. Bill Johnson, in this chapter, talks about something called covenant. Particularly covenant friendships and covenant relationships. That is, friendships and relationships that are built on an agreement and commitment between us that affects our thoughts, our decisions, our growth, our strength, and our life. We desperately need these kind of relationships. And when we enter into covenant relationships with people, covenant friendships, and that includes a marriage, it includes a close friendship, it includes possibly a family relationship, this agreement and this commitment between people that affects every part of our being is such a powerful thing to help us be strengthened in the Lord and become good soil that we can't overestimate it. Here's how uh, Bill Johnson puts it in the chapter. Let me read this for you. Covenant establishes an agreement that allows the spiritual reality that governs your life to flow to the other person and vice versa. When we steward covenant friendships with people of faith, we stay connected to a growing source of strength that often greatly determines our ability to persevere through difficult times. That's powerful. In other words, if you and I are going to go through difficult times, and we will, or we have, and we are going to persevere through those, we desperately need to stay connected to a growing source of strength that comes from strong covenant relationships with people of faith. You are never meant to do that alone. You and I are never meant to go that alone. We are never meant to try and face that stuff by ourselves. We are meant to do it together. That's why we have a prayer room where people can pray with you. That's why we have home groups and we have areas of ministry you can get involved in. And that's why this fall, you need to jump in and see where you can get involved and how you can serve and how you can be part of this thing called the body of Christ. Why? Because you desperately need it. That's why, in order to become the type of soil God wants you to be. We gotta listen. He mentions something here that's really true of all of us. I'm sure you can relate to this. One of the best ways to strengthen myself when I'm tired or discouraged is to grab hold of a friend and spend some time with them. It's got to be the right friend, though. It's got to be the right friend. So how do we listen to the right people? By forming godly covenant friendships and by spending time with trusted friends in the faith together. Number two. So number one is listen to the right people. Number two, don't listen to the wrong people. I mean, how obvious is that, right? You kind of could almost see that I was going there, right? <laughs> you know, these are, what, what are the wrong people? Well, these are those who are the other types of soil. These are those who are the hard or the shallow or the crowded types of soil. These are those who are ignorant of God's truth or unteachable or resistant to change. Those who give up when things get difficult or who talk about what they will do but then don't actually follow through and do it. Those who are focused on the cares of this life or who are self-absorbed or who are too busy to give or serve or follow Jesus wholeheartedly. In Proverbs chapter 22, King Solomon talks of one example of this. He said, don't befriend angry people or associate with hot-tempered people or you will learn to be like them and endanger your soul. Whoa, that's quite a warning. Bill Johnson, he mentions in, re in response to this, he says, I am the only one who is responsible for keeping my own heart free from doubt and judgment, and I alone can recognize when I am vulnerable to the influence of people who agree with the spirits of doubt and judgment. So what he's saying is there, there is that you and I, friends, are responsible for keeping our own hearts as good, malleable, porous, rich so soil. And you and I are alone responsible for recognizing our vulnerability from the influence of people who are like that and to, the, to honestly guard that 
and to set up a guard to guard our heart against it. Listening to those who are hard or doubting or judgmental or shallow or self-focused can cause you to become that way yourself. It can. And I love how Bill says it in the book, my heart is a garden. Some people are good at planting weeds while others plant the kingdom. My job and yours is to know the difference. He is speaking of something called discernment that we desperately need from the Holy Spirit in order to know the difference between those who are planting weeds and those who are planting wheat for the kingdom. We've got to be able to know the difference. In other words, when you're trying to be good soil, you need to keep the weeds out of the garden. And you need to know the difference between the weeds and the wheat and be able to run after the things that God has for you. Run after listening to the right people and run away from listening to the wrong people. So how do we not listen to the wrong people? By guarding our heart. By building a protection from negative influences with the Word of God and the Holy Spirit. Number three, it's the best one, listen to God. So not only listen to the right people, not only don't listen to the wrong people, but equally as simple, but equally as powerful, listen to God. You know, Jesus himself modeled this, eh? It says in, in the Gospels that he often went to a place of solitude to be with and listen to his Father. He also took his disciples at times away from the crowds to rest and to be together so they could listen to him. And in Mark chapter 3, there's an example of this. I love what this record says, how Mark put this. Because there's something that's really precious here. There's, it's really valuable. And if we take the nugget that he gives us and we receive it and we say, that's going to be my goal, it can be life-changing for us. He says this, Jesus went up on a mountainside and he called to him those he wanted and they came to him. He appointed 12 that they might be with him and that he might send them out to preach and to have authority to drive out evil spirits. Now, notice, when Jesus first called them, before he sent them out to do good things, he called them to be with him and to listen to him. And yes, he then did send them out to do great things in his name, and he does the same with us. But before that, he calls us to be with him. This is huge. This is a key. The, this is key to being who God calls us to be and doing anything that he calls us to do. As Bill Johnson puts out, uh, points out, Jesus was moved to action not by human need, but by his Father's heart. He listened to his Father. And then he invited his disciples to come and listen to him because from those words of life that he would give, when they were being with him and listening to him, from that would flow a powerful way that God would move through them and do great things through them. And it's the same for us. So what are we moved by? What moves us to action? Is it the Father's heart? Do we really listen to him? The strength of our intimacy with the Father and with the close covenant relationships in our lives is what will largely determine our ability to minister for God from a place of faith and obedience to Him. If those things aren't in place, if your relationship and your intimacy with the Father and your close covenant relationships with godly people in your life are not in place, you will not be able to effectively minister from a place of faith and obedience to God. God help me to be so. God help me to do so. So how do we listen to God? Well, I think that we can ask God, first of all, what He wants that to look like. Lord, what do you want to say to me? What do you want my time with you to look like? What do you want me to do to, to be able to be with you and listen to you? By being close to Him, to hear His heart. So, what about you? How can you and I make this work? Well, maybe we could start by asking this question. Maybe we could ask, what might be distracting you? 
What could distract you from listening, from being strengthened, from experiencing all that God has for you? What might be distracting you? Bill Johnson in the book actually gives us three ideas of distractions, three potential sources of distractions. It's interesting because some of them are ones that we probably would think of on our own and some of them are not. But here's what he says. He says that one source of distraction can be the devil, definitely is. He is the father of lies, he is the cleverest of liars, and these lies are almost always full of half-truths. He plays on our fears and on our addictions to get us to sin, on our tendencies. The good news is that we don't have to listen to him. That gradually, if our minds are transformed and our senses are trained to hunger and thirst for God, those temptations don't have to hold interest in our hearts anymore. We can say no to those distractions. Another distraction is ourselves. You know, our own past, our habits, our failures, our traditions, our own understanding, things like, this is the way I've always thought, this is the way I've always done it, this is just who I am. This is places where your old limited ways of thinking can keep you from perceiving and responding to what God is trying to teach you. You and I, with our busy, full, crazy, overworked, overspent lives, can be distracted from listening to God very easily. God, help us to not get in the way of listening to you. God, help us not to be distracted. And the third one that he, he, he writes down, which is really hard to grapple with at first, he says, what about God? Now think about that for a minute. Now he's not talking about the person of God himself. God himself will never distract you from listening to him. Never. But what he does is he blesses us. His favor, his benefits, his prosperity and miracles, amazing gifts and, and provision that he pours out in our lives can themselves become the focus and therefore can become a distraction from what we really need and that's him. That's our God himself. Is anyone with me on that? How many of you know you don't need everything that God blesses you with as much as you need Him. How Bill Johnson puts it is, these things have a way of revealing whether we will choose the benefits of friendship above the friend himself. Lord, help me to never do that. Lord, help me to not just look at those things and be distracted by them. Help me, Lord, to look at you and to listen to just you. Here's an amazing truth. When you commit to this, when you commit to use the strength that you have to do this, you will be investing into the time when you yourself will need more strength. There is this beautiful revolving door. When you bless, God blesses. When you pour out, God pours in. When you use what he's given you in, to invest in others, he will invest in you. Anybody want that today? Are you with me? Come on. Let's stand. All right, I have a question for you. Have you noticed that it's hard for us to fly like eagles when we are surrounded by turkeys? Turn to someone near you and ask, are you an eagle or a turkey? Come on. Ask them. Answer the question honestly. Are you an eagle or a turkey? Are you? Sam, are you an eagle or a turkey? <laughs> the reality is this. We want to learn how to fly. To be all that God has called us to be. And to do that, we need to learn how to listen. To listen to God, to listen to the right voices, and to not listen to the wrong ones, or we end up being turkeys who can't fly. What could this look like? Imagine, imagine what could happen if we shut out the negative voices, if we focus and pay attention to the voices we need, to the voice of God. Imagine how strong.
wrong. So let's listen. Let's pay attention. Let's focus. Let's believe. Let's be drawn to God and His promises for us. Because they're real. They're true. They will come to pass. Because our God is a faithful God. Amen? Come on, let's sing about it.
give him praise today. Amen. I couldn't help think when Pastor Tim was sharing about the fact that his father uh, in the church service stopped and said to him, are you listening? And I think God does that with us. I think he does say, are you listening? And I think we jump to the conclusion and we say, yes, God, I'm listening. Or maybe we don't even hear him ask that question because of the chaos and the busyness of our life. And I just want to challenge you this week. Maybe you need to put that cell phone down. Or maybe you need to, like Pastor Tim said, cut the turkeys out of your life. And in exchange, spend... And so we just want to encourage you that with that this morning. And we hope that this service has been meaningful and beneficial for you. If you have any questions, our pastors are going to be out in the atrium and they'll be more than happy to answer any questions you might have as well as our prayer room is open if you want to seek prayer this morning. Thank you so much for being with here. If you call Gateway your home, we would so appreciate it if you could stack the chairs 10 high and move them to the side. That would be fantastic. Have a great week, and we look forward to seeing you.